Hey fam, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, I am not doing my table of demons video because I am currently getting ready to go to a wedding right now. My husband's cousin is getting married, so I'm just in my hotel room right now and I don't have time to film like a whole big thing or edit. So anyway, I'm actually in St. Paul, Minnesota right now. And I noticed people were like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that you were going to be in town. And I'm like, you guys, you guys have to follow me on social media because on Facebook, I always post all of my events like way ahead of time. Like they're all on the event tab. And I know people are all like, oh, well, you know, I'm so above Facebook. Like I've got rid of that years ago. Okay, great, whatever. <laughs> like I also post all of my events on Eventbrite. So if you guys want to fellowship with other Christians, my next meetup is going to be in Washington, D.C. And then I have another one after that that is going to be in San Jose, California. And I will be going to Europe in February, but I have not decided whether or not I'm going to do a meetup there just because it's it's really uh, difficult to plan these things. And especially if I'm unfamiliar with the location, Eh, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, so we had a really good meetup in St. Paul and we had a couple. They drove in from Iowa. That's like a four and a half hour drive. And then another woman, she brought her uncle and I kind of want to talk about him because he, he was like really great to talk to because he is a missionary in Spain. Now he originally was doing mission work in Guatemala, which is in, you know, Central America. And he was just talking about how the body of Christ down in Central and South America really have a heart for missions to Muslim countries specifically. So right now he is in Spain doing mission work to proselytize to people who are Muslims because, you know, Spain was under Muslim rule for 800 years. There's like a huge Muslim influence on Spain. You see it in the architecture. It's like, it's very pretty, things like that. I mean, you can see the Islamic influence throughout Spain and everywhere that Spain colonized. You see the Islamic influence. So I definitely see the connection there, but um, it was just really exciting to hear how people do have a heart for people who are Muslim. And I was also really excited because one of the people who came to my meetup in New York City back in February, he left for South Korea, like I wanna say like maybe two weeks ago. And um, he's doing a missions training program there. And once he's done with his training program, they are sending him to Egypt because he had a heart for proselytizing or uh, doing missions work in Egypt specifically to Muslim believers. And um, this kind of goes in line with what I was talking about in my last video about why it's so important to know your Bible, because it's not just about you having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Remember, we're not supposed to just be hearers of the word. We're supposed to be doers of the word. And being a doer of the word, bearing the fruit of a Christian is not just being like a nice person, like a fruit of the spirit is not just being like a pleasant person to be around. It's somebody who's actually increasing the kingdom of God. And a lot of people, they want to just kind of like focus on themselves and like their relationship and like, what does God have in store for them? What are their blessings going to be? What is God's plan for their life? Well, God's plan for your life is to increase the kingdom of God. Like, he is giving you gifts, abilities, and talents, not to just benefit your own life, but to bring other people into, I don't know, into God's kingdom. Like, it's not us that's doing it. It's the Holy Spirit that's working through us. But we have to be a willing partner of the Holy Spirit to allow him to work through us so that the work of the ministry can be done. And I noticed that whenever people talk about Muslims or, you know, just Islam in general. And I mean, here in Minnesota, there is a large Muslim population. Like I notice in Las Vegas, eh, you'll see some people like wearing a hijab or uh, maybe some traditional clothing that identifies them as Muslim. 
but here in Minnesota, like, it is very obvious <laughs> that there are a lot of Muslims, specifically Somali Muslim women. You see it everywhere. And, um, I know Islam is like a very touchy subject or just dealing with Muslims, befriending them, talking to them, because people let their own personal prejudices get in the way of them doing the gospel. And we can't be like that because I know, um, like in the past I've talked about how I have a friend and she's Muslim and like when I was getting married, her mom like did like a parental blessing over me, even though like she's not my parent, but she's like really nice. Um, she died last month. But uh, I saw that people were kind of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you would, you know, get involved with these people. Like, you guys, we're supposed to let the Holy Spirit work through us. And we might not be the one converting somebody. Remember, it's always the Holy Spirit that does the work. But we want to put on a good representation of a Christian for other believers. Because we might be the only... Bible that people ever have access to. You might be the only Christian that people ever meet. And that's why we have to be open to sharing the gospel with others. And part of that is not only learning scripture for ourselves, because we have to know the Bible. If you want to share the Bible, you have to know the Bible. Like If you want to share the love of Jesus, if you want to sh share a relationship with Jesus, you have to have one yourself. <laughs> so, um, it's not only that, but you need to have some sort of knowledge about what they believe, too. But a lot of Christians, they don't even want to learn, like, learn their Bible, let alone learn what other people believe. And we have to remember, the whole purpose that we're here on Earth is not so that we can live our best life. Our whole purpose here is to increase God's kingdom. It's to let the Holy Spirit work through us so that His will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. And remember, everybody needs to hear the gospel. There's nobody that is like so evil, so terrible, so bad, so far gone that they don't deserve to have the gospel preached to them. Because how will they know the gospel unless somebody preaches to them? Scripture straight up tells us is how will they hear if nobody preaches? How will people preach if nobody's sent? And, um, I just see kind of an attitude in the church where it's like, oh, well, you know, they're Muslims and they don't like XYZ country or, you know, they're our enemies. No, they're not. Remember, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It wasn't, oh, we're slightly better than everybody else. No, we're all sinners. And if it wasn't for somebody, you know, preaching the gospel to us, we would be in the same predicament as every other person who has not come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, scripture tells us that God desires that none should perish. He wants to have a relationship with people, but if we are unwilling to put aside our personal prejudices and our, I don't know, presuppositions about people, then Satan wins because if people don't hear the gospel, if they only have an idea, like they know that, you know, there's a Jesus or something like that. I know Muslims believe that Jesus exists. They call him Isa. That's how you say Jesus in Arabic, but they consider him just a prophet. But Isa is not just a prophet. He's God. But unless somebody is there to show them like, hey, this is actually what scripture says. And hey, I know what the Quran says. I know what the Hadiths say about this. But here's actually the truth. How will they know? And, you know, just like a lot of Christians, they never read their Bible. It's the same with Muslims. They never read their Quran or whatever. It's just everybody has an idea about what their scriptures say. And, oh, you know, my family's this, so I'm this. And, you know, people really aren't that different. And that's why it's important that we have a heart for what God has a heart for. And God has a heart for winning souls. And that's why I'm excited to see people actually acting out their faith. People like um, 
my friend, the Crack Your Bible family member who is in uh, Korea right now and is about to go on to Egypt to talk to this missionary, to see other people who are actually going out and not being just hearers of the word, but being doers of the word. So I guess the whole point of this is to say, like, remember, everybody needs to hear the gospel. It's not that no one has done something so terrible or they don't deserve to go to heaven. Oh, you don't deserve to hear the gospel because we don't need your kind in heaven. No, God wants a relationship with them. And he didn't just die for you. He died for them too. So we have to let them know. And if they don't want to accept the information, that's fine. But it's our job to at least give them the information. And we need to do it in such a way where we're not turning people off to the gospel because it's so goofy, it's so out there, or it's so ineffective. Because I see a lot of Christian witnessing where I'm like, oh, you're actually doing more harm to the kingdom than not just because it's so poorly done or it's done with such like a terrible attitude. Like I have an attitude with people in the church because y'all should know better. But when I'm interacting with non-believers, it's a whole different ball game. Cause like we're a family, I can talk to you like this. <laughs> uh, strangers, no. So um, it's the same, you know at home, like you can talk to your family in a certain way. Like you can be real with them, you can keep it a hundred, but you're not necessarily gonna be like that with complete strangers. And in the body of Christ, we're all family and that's why we gotta keep each other in check. And that's why I am harsh about some of this stuff. Cause it's like, dude, you know, we have like very limited time and we can't waste our time being goofy and we can't waste our time being prejudiced or I don't know just ridiculous like having all these ideas about like well they don't deserve to hear the gospel no they deserve to hear the gospel just like you should um just like you deserved to hear the gospel because not because of anything that you did but just because that's what God desires and if we love God, we want to do his will. And so I would just say, you guys, not only study your Bible, but listen to the Holy Spirit and see, like, who is he leading you towards? Like, who do you just feel like a pull towards? Is there a certain language that you're interested in? Maybe a certain culture? Maybe those are the kind of people that God is specifically pushing you towards so that you can share the gospel with. So that's something that I wanted you to think about. And I hope you will like, subscribe, and share. And... Yes, this is my microphone. I knew everybody was going to have a heart attack because I'm like sitting here in a sportswear and people are going to be oh. <laughs> So yeah, that's why I'm holding my mic right here. So anyway, I will talk to you guys later about the table of demons when I get home, but I'll talk to you later. Bye.